Yeah. It's coming up a different name. I'm trying to switch the name. Hey guys, it's AJ. If you could hear me. Oh. Can you see me? Yeah, if you're maybe you're can't. There you go. There we go. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for doing oh. this. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Let me try and raise this chair. I feel like I'm very small. All right. Joey should be on shortly. Okay. So I'll just start to introduce introduce you guys and as i said the idea is uh these aren't I, I teach media classes for the most part these aren't even media students they're students who are interested in criminal justice they want to go into law law enforcement legal you know anything of that nature and what i try to nice. do with this class media is my background is try to um, require them to create their own media content so just like you guys have this new platform and you can say whatever you want to say, that's kind of what I want them to do. So if you guys can talk about literally for the first part, how sure. the idea, I think that's, that's the yes. best part. Perfect. Yeah. We'll talk about that. If you want to talk about addiction, we could do that. If you want to talk yeah, about I the mean, criminal justice system, we could do it all. Yeah. I, I mean, seriously, uh, it's whatever, you know, you guys have an audience of people who listen to you. They're, they're a lot younger. So I, um, you know, they, they had a couple articles. I even think Joey shared those articles. So um, they don't, they know more about podcasting than they know, or I should say they know more about the media than they know about Joey. So however, however angle you want. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. How many people are going to be on? Probably, this is tough with students, you never know. Uh, probably like 20, I would imagine, maybe even more. Uh, part of what we'll do too is I got to make sure, I gotta, I'll got to. i do that now, is recording. I'm sure more people will see it recorded because yeah. it's at a particular time right now. So more people will probably see the recorded version. I got to make sure I record that. Putting right. it in the chat. Yeah, that's a link. Okay, yeah, it's no. I'm on already. Could you email me the link? What email you want me to send it to? Uh, All right, you got it. Where are you at? I'm on the Zoom call. News. The, the professors on already and three students. Yeah. They're a lot. They're, well. You're still about 10 minutes before I, I told him to be on at 1030. So still a little bit of time for him.
They just sent them over to link. When okay. I'm when I'm not with them, sometimes it's a little hard. <laughs> yeah, where now? Are you in South Philly now? I'm in New Jersey right now, but yeah, I'm in South okay. Philly still. He's in Boca. I wish I was in Boca right now. Yeah. So, how many episodes a week do you guys do? You guys shoot like one day and break it up, or do you do it daily? So we do. We usually we usually film every Monday. But we went to Vegas. We filmed three episodes of Vegas, so we're caught up. I don't have to go back to Florida until the 22nd next week. And do you have an idea? Like you want three a week, once five a month? I think once a week is good so you don't run out of content because on top of the once a week, we also do the live shows. Right. So that's another good thing. We usually do that on Fridays. How long have you been there for? I've been here. Jesus Christ. I've been here. It's my 18th year. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Prior to that, I've been teaching for about 25 years. I used to, I went to LaSalle. I used to work for the, Okay. so Philadelphia for the most part. I live up here now outside Princeton, but Philadelphia. Nice. Is there good food up there? Um, really? No. I mean, it is funny. Um, so I have two two Nate two teenage boys. We come in. We come to probably South Philly once a month to come down. Yeah. Go down there, you know, to to eat and everything. So we travel. You know, probably travel more for food than Central Jersey. Yeah. That's awesome. I wish I went to college. You know, it's 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 a changing it's a changing environment right now. Yeah. With, there's you know, there's more opportunities to uh, there's there's no one path to take. And I think the idea too, especially of yeah. of podcasting, is you got an idea, you know that's what I'm doing with these guys. You, know, you just, yeah. just do I, it. Just for the experience though, to be there. You know what I mean? That's probably the that that's probably the biggest value added is experience, people you meet, things like that. Yeah. Hey guys, if you're logged on and you can hear me, uh, I told uh, everybody about ten thirty, so we'll we'll get started there. But we'll go ten thirty, and I know you have other classes, and I just want to make sure we're done with that. So we'll ten thirty, eleven fifteen, we'll do that time. And if anybody has any questions about other about our other meetings in class. We'll have class regular time. We'll meet Wednesday in the classroom. We'll talk about this experience and then we'll talk about 
the remainder of the semester. So any questions about that, you can wait till Wednesday. If not, send me an email or stop by. Here comes Joey now. Okay. I see you just went on. Make sure you hit start video. Should be right on your screen. There you go. I can't hear it. You'll hear. Hold on. Can you hear me, Joe? Could you hear me? Yeah, yeah you gotcha. All right. All right. I don't know how to work this stuff. You're good right <laughs> there. How you doing, Professor? Good, Joey. How are you? Good, my buddy. Thanks, Thanks for, for having me. Thanks for doing this. We appreciate it. No, nah, anytime. We'll do it a couple times, whatever you want to do it. Great. Appreciate it. How many how many kids are in a class? So there's roughly in the class about 20. You can see the students now. Um, I, I think for the most part, too, you'll a lot of people will get this recorded because they'll see the recorded version. I can share that, share that definitely with you guys. Um, it's a during a class time right now. So for the most part, I think a lot of people will see it via a recording. But these guys are here. They'll have questions for you. OK, great. Sound good. How's the weather there? Rainy today, and I'm sure it's not as good as Boca. And I don't know what's no, going on in Boca, but I'm sure it's, 80, it's, not it's as 82 good. Not out of the sky. Yeah, we, not we, have, the sky. we haven't had Boca weather in New Jersey in a while. Where's the college at, Professor? It's right, uh, well, you know the bridge, the, the what Trenton makes, the world takes, you know that bridge? Yeah, yeah. So that goes from Morrisville to Trenton, and we are three, four miles right up Route 1 from there. So between oh, nice. between Trenton and Princeton. Oh, nice. What, what grade are the kids in? So these are all freshmen to Fresh seniors, yeah. Oh, freshmen to seniors, huh? Yeah, and for the most part, they are... Criminal justice, uh, sociology, pre-legal studies, those type of those type of majors. So a lot of them will be going to law school, and I, I think, right? Some of them have that. Yeah, yeah. some of them have yeah. a desire to do that. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's good. A lot of people are on. This is good. I, I only see you two. Uh, look really? Make right your screen there. bigger. Yeah. It's bigger. What are you talking about? I don't know how to work this thing. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Participants, 28. Hold on. I got to hit that? Well, I think if you want to look. You don't have to if you don't want to. No, it's got all the names. But I, 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 I can't see nobody. It says 28 people. Everybody's name just came up. What do you have? Do you see a a square of little squares in your top right corner that says view. Well, yeah, it's like a, it looks like a Rubik's cube. Yeah, yeah, click that on. Yeah. It and says gallery view. Yeah, put gallery view on. Oh, now I see it, okay, now I see it. All right, guys. <laughs> yeah, I can okay, see guys, let's get, we'll, we'll get started I then. I don't know how to work this thing. 
Yeah, you got to excuse me. I have no I, I don't know nothing about social media. I'm bad. Well, you've got a popular podcast. How can you know <laughs> nothing about social media? He's like, learning. He's learning. He's doing I'm good. Learning. I can't. I I want to I want to join my Patreon for, to watch it. My kids have to do it. I don't even know how to sign up. Every time I do something, it never works. Yeah, it's it's a learning process for everybody, really, in that sense. And all right, so guys, we'll get started here. As I've said in our crime media or crime and justice in the media class, and then there's some other media students joining. We're lucky to have Joey Merlino and Little Snuff here with us, and we're going to talk about a host of topics. We can talk about it from as many perspectives as possible, and the idea is learn about this situation of the criminal justice system, things that interest you professionally, as well as media. Because I think one of the main points what we can talk about from a media perspective is Joey and Little Snuff weren't really focused on podcasts beforehand. They came into it. And now you guys have listened to the podcast, you've seen social media. They really do have an extremely popular podcast. And the idea of that popular podcast is you um, give people raw, unfiltered conversation, give people content they otherwise wouldn't get. So we'll talk about that if we have questions. If you have a question, just do me a favor and I want you guys to ask it. Uh, put in the um, chat, it just, you know, just put your name or you have a question, you'll go for it. Also in the chat, you'll see is a link to the, the Skinny's Patreon page. It's right there. You can click on there different memberships to get different content. There's so many different ways. Thank you. Getting content. Thank you. So let, let's start out with Joey and Little Snuff. First of all, thanks for being here. And we look at it for both of you. Where did this podcast idea come from? Because we have a lot of college students, 18 to 20 year olds, podcasting, podcasting. But for you guys, where did this idea come from to get this podcast? I came to Snuff. Well, first I said, I'm going to do a podcast. Um, I was gonna do it myself. And a friend of mine from California, I was telling him like the ideas. I, I said, I want to be the voice for the, the people who have no voice. You know, like the wrongly convicted in jail, they ain't got nothing. They can't talk. Nobody, you know, they can't even make a phone call. So he said that's a good idea. He said, You gotta get like a co-host. So he was naming all these people. A couple were like movie stars. I said, I got the guy. And I sent him a, a video of snuff. He said he's a natural, you gotta he's gotta be your, your guy. And that's how we started. Yeah. Just like that. I think you're muted. I think he hit the mute button. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So beforehand, because a lot of these students are just literally, I told them, uh, go make a podcast. And the Yeah, the just do it. I give you the better. You do your own thing. What did you know about podcasting prior to just get it off the ground? Absolutely. Well, we nothing. really didn't know anything. Nothing. Yeah. I never talked. Oh. On, I never talked on camera. I knew. I don't even know how to put a contact in the phone. Like I'm not good. Like with the social media, like all this stuff. Uh, we knew nothing. Nothing. Yeah, we just. I was doing social media videos before, like making car commercials, stuff like that. But I never got into podcasting. Like I did a couple interviews with the car dealership. But when Joey approached me with the idea, then we really started looking it up and getting into it. But even before this, I really didn't even listen to a lot of podcasts. And what you, if this is one of the things the students have looked at. Isn't, do you think that's a reason why your podcast is different? If we're in 2024 now, we have social media, yeah. we have so many different platforms that you don't want to copy what used to be Jim Gardner on the six o'clock news, or you didn't want to be right. as exactly like what you heard on the radio or newspaper so this let's call it naivete about the platform do you think that helped you and gave you the type of programming that has got such a big audience right now yeah i mean you know what's funny we get a million dms from people and this is the god's honest truth like oh who's your writer he's the greatest he's great i love your writer your jokes are better. whoever writes your jokes we have no writer we have no producer we have nothing Listen, I can't, Nothing, it's just us. I can't understand my own handwriting. And me and Snuff will call me and they'll say, well, what are we going to talk about tomorrow? We just, you know, we just wing it. It's just, it's the truth. When you're telling the truth, it's easy to, you know what I mean? It's just easy. You don't have to remember. That's why people like it because it's the truth. 
So who is too, one of the things we talk about from to, to media students creating their own media, if it's, let's say it's criminal justice related, sports related, whatever it might be, what is your target audience? Do you have a target audience? Do you feel like you need to cater a message to them? Who in the grand scheme of things, I know you want as many listeners and eyeball subscribers as possible, but in the grand scheme of things, who are you trying to reach? Well, we first started out like, you know, like the, the criminal justice trying to help. It. We want to reach everybody. Like, you know, we're just, we only got 32 episodes. We want to do everything, cooking, criminal justice, sports, uh, working out, working out, fashion, you name it. We want to get, we want to get more woman, you know what I mean? Like, I guess we got to get woman on the show. Okay, and let's look at this, Joey. If you could give these guys a background, too, of your situation, and I think it would be interesting for both you and Little Snuff. As I said, we're in New Jersey here. We hear about South Philly. Some some of these guys are obviously younger, in their in their teens, early twenties. You grew up in South Philly. What was South Philly like in the seventies? I think for these guys, they probably think of the Rocky movies. That's that's yeah. probably their that's probably their visualization of it. What was South well, Philly like? What was your upbringing like? Just give us a little background into into where you came from. South Philly was, listen, we used to leave our doors open, unlocked. Nobody never stole nothing. Everybody sitting outside. We had no, we had three TV channels, three, six, uh, 10, and, and channel 48. We had like no 400 channels. We couldn't even watch the Flyers game because we lived on the other side of Broad Street. You had to have prison back then. Everybody was, was close knit. Everybody, we used to walk in each other's houses. You know, like everybody was friends. And it was, it was great growing up. We played, we were outside all the time. These kids today, they're all on video games. We had no video games. We played hockey, basketball, football, baseball. You name it, we played. My mother had to, had to come and get us to bring us in. And then we come home. <laughs> get, we didn't have a shower. Take a bath and get up for school, and that was it. It was a good neighborhood. Rocky was falling right up my street. The, Rocky won. I was a kid. I remember we, we walked down there. It was an epiphany. It's a, that's the school I went to. And I seen a thing. I'm saying, what, what are they making a movie? They're like, yeah, Rocky. I said, oh, this movie will never make it. They're making it in South Philly up, up the street. And that was the biggest, one of the biggest shows ever. Yeah. And Little Snuff, what about you? You're, you grew up in South Philly also, different time frame. What have you seen in terms of you know, how it shaped you guys? And I think it shapes you in terms of your delivery and your authenticity. Well, it makes you who you are today. Like we grew up in a small, you know, a small community, South Philly. Everybody's very close, tight knit. You know, you have old heads that you look up to when you're growing up and it's just, you you know, you, you go with the flow. South Philly is a different atmosphere. Like I said, everybody's really close. I went to Catholic school growing up um, and then you just really get into everything as you get older. You know, it's just it's a good place to grow up at for sure. I didn't get to see, like Joey said, you know, you leave your doors open. Everybody comes on. Everybody's close. Now you got to watch walking down, down the street. Everything changes. Yeah, you leave your door open now to rob the whole house. Yeah, I'll take everything. So, Joey, if you could talk to now about you mentioned the criminal justice system and your experience with it. These guys are studying it. As we were talking about, some want to go into lawyer, uh, the lawyer legal avenue, maybe law enforcement. They've also we've in this semester, we've watched a couple of movies as well. We watched The Verdict, the Paul Newman movie um, and then Michael Clayton, the George Clooney movie, just to give them an idea of what Hollywood has to say about the legal profession, what people see in terms of uh, formulating an opinion. Can well, you just talk about your idea? Just what do you want to share with students studying this from your perspective? Well, Hollywood, you know, they glamorize it. You know what I mean? They, you know, young kids watch it. They're like, well, I want to be like him, you know, whatever. If it's a gangster show about a Scarface, whatever, you know, they, they glamorize it, you know, and then the guy gets 20 years, and after two commercials, he's home. But when you get 20 years, for real, ain't no two commercials. It's 20 calendars. You got to do 20 years in fucking jail. I mean, you know, it's it's, it's not it's not a TV show. That's what people don't realize. You know, how Hollywood glamorizes it. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's sad. And with that, when the, the time you were in prison and you were able to obviously reflect, have a long time, what were some of the things that you said when I get out, I need to share this information with people. I want them to know 
what this is like, maybe different than Hollywood, different than the news, just different from whatever perceptions of the penal system are. Yeah, I mean, I, listen, I, I'm here. I listen to you guys, all the kids. I mean, I don't want to, don't follow my footsteps. Believe me, I, I did. I was bad in school. I got thrown out. I didn't graduate. I got trouble writing. I learned how to read in jail. So that you, you got the world by the balls. Stay in school. You can be whatever you want. You could be a lawyer. Whatever you want to be, you could be. Just you got it. You, you're there. You're in college. It's over with. My daughter's a lawyer. She went to Villanova and she went to law. She's a lawyer for three years. I mean, she didn't take it after me. She took it after my wife with the smarts, but you could be whatever you want. I'm telling you, you got it. It's over with. You could be whatever you want. I wish I could. I wish I were you guys and, and, and know now what, you know, what I know now, I would forget it. And so Joey, with the idea of your perception in terms of being in the media, uh, can you talk about that? You were a high profile figure in the media. There was a lot of media reports on you. This was more newspaper, television compared to social media. How do you think that impacted the way you were treated by the legal system? You were a known name. What, what impact do you think that had? I was a target. Believe me, it sold papers. I was a target. They hated me. And I'm not told, when I say like law enforcement, I don't mean, I don't mean, you know, cops and listen, we need cops in society, you know, we didn't have cops, but my mother couldn't go to the store to get robbed. I'm talking about like the FBI and like, you know, like the high, you know, federal agencies. They hated me. They probably, they still do probably what I'm doing now. And now you're able to speak about this. So if you could look at, just describe the situation with trials that you were in with the high profile and they hated you. Was there an idea that you were a specific target in the government, the federal agencies, that you were an important target for them and that's all that mattered rather than this idea of justice and legality? Well, it wasn't justice. They, they just wanted a conviction. You know what I mean? Then, then they get promoted. I mean, the, the guy, the U.S. attorney on my case was the same manager. He was, a, he, was a, he was a lawyer. He was horrible. I mean, and he, I mean, he didn't convict us. I mean, what we got convicted for, we said we did. We beat all the cases. Now he's in a law firm making $5 million a year. <laughs> you know, and his claim to fame is he put me away. That's what, you know, that, that's what, it's all about money. I mean, there's no job. I mean, the justice was horrible. We, me and my friends were to get out of jail card free. Like Monopoly, That that's exactly what it was. I mean, we, we didn't do it. We, we got to quit it. I mean, we got to quit it time after time and the jury didn't believe the people and we didn't really we did not do i mean we weren't angels yeah i mean did i gamble and book making i wasn't even a book yeah i just said i was but yeah we did that stolen property but i we didn't hurt nobody and they and they knew it but it's they make it so easy a guy just comes in and says joey told me to do it he goes home he's he's facing life he goes home and, and i gotta and i gotta fight for my life Listen, they got to win one time. I got to win every time. If I don't win, I'm I'm dead. I, I'm never sitting here. I got life and no parole. So, little snuff, I'll direct it to you with a question after what Joey just said. How important it is for your podcast to be able now to talk about this? Joey's giving his perspective, talking about, in a negative sense, the, the legal system, in this case, the federal government, where we watch television, right? The FBI is all yeah. good. They do everything great. How good is it for you to create this content and programming where you are literally giving an opposing view that I don't think people hear otherwise? Yeah, because it's good because like Joey says all the time, like there's people in jail that are innocent. Not everybody's innocent, but there are people that are in there that have been put away for no reason. You know, that don't have the money to get a good lawyer. They can't do anything. They got to get a public defender. So then they just plead and they go to jail for the rest of their life and they really didn't do the crime. Like Joey beat two cases back to back, double jeopardy, right? Joey was called. Well, I, I, no, I beat. I got charged with. You might have mute. I got, I got a charge in, in the Rico case with the a murder that I got acquitted of. I beat it. The next day they charged me the same murder in Newark federal court, which was never heard of. The state could charge you in a murder, and if you beat it, the feds could pick it up. But once the feds charge you, you yeah, beat it's it. Never nobody, heard of. nobody could pick it up. 
and I fought I fought collateral stopless. I lost two one. That it was double jeopardy. I had to go to trial again, facing life, death, and I beat it again. I, mean, I didn't do it. We didn't do it. I didn't do it. Twenty four people found me. See, that's why it's unfair. I mean, there's a kid we went. So we to went have to the school. podcast is good. We went to a school about a month ago to talk to kids, high school, high school kids. And there was a guy there by the name of Yaya. Uh, he did 27 years straight. He was innocent. They let him out. He got locked up when he was 17, a juvenile. You know, he don't know nothing. He's a kid. He's a fucking kid. He got locked up. He got a, no money. Dead broke. Gets a public defender. The public defender comes and sees him. They don't care. They get paid 100 an hour, whatever they get. They get their money. They go home. He met, the first time he met him when he started trial, a lawyer. This is a lawyer. Never went and seen him. And he said, the, wave, the, wave the jury trial. He said, the judge is a good judge. I know him. The guy said, I don't want to do that. He said, no, listen to me. He waived the jury trial. He listened to the lawyer. He's a kid. He's 18 years old. Then he told him, don't get on a stand because you got a, a, a record. He wanted to get on a stand and tell his side of the story. He's innocent. He got found guilty. He gave him life for no parole. And Crazy. got no money. It's nuts. It's a, it's a fucking... Listen, everybody in jail is not innocent. But... There's a lot of people that are innocent. And this kid did 27 years for nothing. They took 27 years of his life. He got out. I mean, thank God he got out. But my my friend, Joey Marone, the lawyer, he's a great lawyer. He got he got five people out in the last year. One guy, 47 years straight, innocent. Another guy, 44 years straight, innocent. Another guy, 33 years on death row, innocent. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> So we have a couple of students have some questions, which is good. Uh, just send me in the chat and I, just so I can make it a little bit of, a, of an order to do this. So, Joey, let me ask you this, and then I'm going to kick it over to the students. During your trials, when you were there, um, just speak like how different is it? Is it the lawyers, the judges, the whole system? How different is it than we see on this glamorized version of television, movies, Hollywood, actual a court case where you've got lawyers arguing, you've got a judge. When you're there and you're witnessing this firsthand, how different is it than what we've seen on television or movies? I mean, some of it's like similar to, you know, but when you're sitting there and you're, you're fighting for your life and then you especially you got people get on the stand and, and you know they're lying. Like we had 10 informants, they just got on the stand and you know, you're sitting there and, and, and they're out in that line and, and you know they're lying and you, but you can't do nothing. You can't react. You just got to sit there and be calm. And, you know, you, the juror is looking at you. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's tough. It's hard. It's hard to sit there, you know, especially when people are lying about you. And then just one more and I'll kick it to the students for a little snuff and Joey both to answer this. Unfortunately, if we look at the criminal justice system and the, the way the federal government gets involved, there's probably for decades, maybe centuries, people who have been in there wrongfully committed, right? There have been cases of people who should not be uh, committed for what they did or did not do. How important is it that now you have a podcast to talk about it before perhaps maybe you wrote a book or maybe there was a magazine article or maybe you did like a sit down talk show where you could get some of this feelings out about what you had. How important is it now to have this platform of a podcast to share this information? No, we love it. I mean, I, 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 love, I have a friend of mine. Matter of fact, this case is in Jersey. I, he's up. He wasn't rollway. He got moved. Uh, if you guys want to check it out, I, I think he goes up May 1st. They keep on delaying it. Marty Tassetta, check out the Tassetta case. Here's a guy 30 years and 33 years in jail. He's dead innocent. Dead yeah. innocent. And they found he found that out. I mean, the case is so corrupt. They gotta let him go. I mean, the people lied on him. He was in a dentist's office. They held the FBI held back at 302 for 25 years. They knew he wasn't there. They had it. They never gave it to him. I mean, it's just corrupt. So he goes back in front of the judge. He was he was supposed to go uh, March. Then they postponed it. They said they're investigating. There's nothing to investigate. They gotta let the guy out. The guy did 33 years in jail. He's dead innocent. Crazy, it's fucking nuts! It's sick. It's crazy. Ruined his whole life. You'll never get that time back. You can't get and it that's back. That's what our platform is for. I don't care how much money they give you. You can't get it back. Okay, let's do some questions here. I'm sure you guys are sick <clears> of me <throat> asking questions, so let's kick it to you guys. Atuna, you have a question. So just as we do it, click on your mic, ask a question, follow up, go for it. 
um, the right person may be just to connect with the system that has a good system. I can't hear you that good. Um, sorry, can you hear me better now? Yeah, I hear you a little better. It's a little better. Uh, so do you think the criminal justice system has good policies or like practices in place for like reform and helping um, people who are released from jail be able to mm -hmm. enter society and be like successful? No, because first of all, when you come out, you, you got to understand, like you got people go away to do 20 years. They, they lost their mother, their father. They have no money. When I was away, I made $5 a month, <laughs> $5 a month. And they come home, they got no parents, they, they got no family, they got, people don't even get a visit. They come home, where are they gonna get a job at? Where are they gonna get insurance? I mean, it's, 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 set up, it's set up for you to fail, it really is. And then you got like probation, parole. Look at Meek Mills, he kept on getting violated for nothing. It's a revolving door. You know how many kids are in jail that I was with that were, that were on drugs? They, they were addicted to pills. They got 10 years for selling pills. They, were, they weren't drug dealers. They were users. They need help. They don't need jail. They need, they need rehab. They need rehab. Okay, this is a good uh, follow-up then with that question. Thanks for that, Atunu. Uh, Janaya, what do you what's your uh, question? I think you have, it's a good follow-up here. Yeah. Hi, my name is Janaya. Um, I just have a quick question. So how do you wish to be remembered in the context of like the stories that have been told about you? And what do you think is the biggest misconception about you? Well, it made me look like a bad guy. I'm really not a bad guy. <laughs> I'm not an angel, but 95% of the things they said I did, I never did. So, but I like to help the community and I want to remember, you know, just helping people. I don't want them to go through what I went through. So, Joey, let me ask a follow up to that, where you, you talked about you were no angel and there was some bookmaking, gambling going on. That was a big part of South Philly culture for a long time. Does it aggravate you now that we have legalized sports betting? There's multiple but, casinos in Philadelphia. How do you put that into context, how things have changed over the listen, last? Listen, I went to trial in 2018. I got convicted of making a bet. Betting. Not bookmaking, calling up and making a bet over the phone. I bet New England, they lost anyway. I got two years in jail for making a bet. I'm the only guy in the country that ever went to jail for making a bet. Now the whole world bets. If they had yeah, to lock absolutely. everybody up, there, if they had to lock everybody up, they made a bet, they had to build 10 million prisons. Two years for making a bet. And so little snuff with you guys, I, and that's one of the things I like your podcast. <laughs> is you're talking about all these different topics and betting yeah. and sports. It is a big topic of conversation, particularly in the legalized sports betting environment. How do you mesh all these different topics together? You guys could talk about 3 million topics. How did you, did yeah. you find a way or do you just get the ball rolling and talk? Once we start going, we can't stop. You know, like we said, we don't write anything down. Everything's the truth. It could be 10 minutes before the show and we're in the car driving there. And I'm like, what are we going to talk about? He's like right off the top of our heads. But it all meshes together. If it's sports, uh, whether it's gambling, whether it's people with addiction, prison reform, it all kind of goes together and it makes for a good story. And when you're telling the truth, it's easy to talk about. And if you could follow up with that, you talked about addiction. I know that's a topic you guys, it's important to you. You stress yeah. What what can you share about what you've learned, how to help people? Because we know it's a problem, particularly the students who are studying this from the criminal justice element. Yeah. How do you have a criminal justice system, rehabilitate, have people that have addiction problems? Is there any way to marry this to, to help society in the best way possible? Of course, like Joey said, there's people in jail that were on pills that are wind up being in jail that are probably still getting high in jail when they really should have been in rehab. You know, I'm clean and sober going on eight years. I got sober at 24 years old. I'm 32. So it's a big part of my life. It's a big part of the podcast because thank you, because we're here to help people also. And if anybody out there knows somebody or if you're even struggling with addiction, we'll put our email on here, my phone number. You could always reach out, text or call me. But it's a big part about life. You have to get involved in society. You have to do the next right thing. You can't just even go to jail, come out and go back to the same thing. You know, when you're sitting in jail and you're detoxing, it's not a good feeling. When you're on the when street I, and you're homeless and you're detoxing, it's not a good feeling. 
when I was on the street, I had a restaurant and I know Snuff's whole family. Like I know his dad, I grew up with him. And he, he's younger than me, he's 30 years younger than me. And he got the, they yeah. sent him to my, they sent him to me to send him to rehab. And he came down, yeah, I got Florida. a speed burger. I said, get your ass in rehab and get yourself right. And he's been straight since. Clean and sober ever since. God bless him. But a lot of people, like I say, are in jail. Listen, when when when, when you got an addiction, they'll send a guy to you and, and ask you, now this is the, the FBI sending a guy to you. You're a drug user. Do you sell pills? Yeah, I sell anything. You're just trying to get money to make, to get high. But they're not drug dealers. And and, and, and these kids get 10 years. It's, it's, yeah. it's crazy. It's sad. They don't need jail. They need, they need rehab. Okay, Aiden, you have a question? Go for that. Okay, so I was just going to ask um, if you think uh, any of the rehabilitative programs in prison, like, are they actually effective or not? And if so, like, what do you think they could do to change it if they're not? I don't, I don't, I mean, I never, I can't speak because I never really went to them. I, I never did a drug in my life. So I never went to the, the, like the, the programs in jail. But from what I hear, no, nah, it's just, they just sit around and talk. I mean, it's it's nah. a revolving door to get more money. It's a revolving door. I mean, it's a, it's a big money. Listen, if there was no crime, if, if there was no jails, you know how many jobs? There'd be no prison guards, no judges, no lawyers. No, I mean, it's, 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 you're talking billions of dollars. It's a revolving door. I mean, they just, they set you up. The failure. How's a guy do 20 years, come home? Who's going to give him a job? He got no job. He got no GED. He got nothing. He got no family. He got no money. What's he going to do? Do you think, Joey, it how much just does the average person, do they know or not know the business of incarceration? It is, as you said, it's a billion dollar business. We might think be a trillion dollar society, business. But how much do you think people know about the business elements? Nobody, nobody knows about it. Nobody. Listen, they got the commissary in there. They own it. It's the only store. It ain't like you could say, oh, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to ShopRite. No, I'm going to go to Publix. It's cheaper. Either you buy it there or you don't get nothing. So, I mean, it, it's, it's big money. It's big money. They have a thing called Unicorn in every federal prison. Now, each federal prison does different things. Like I was in Beaumont, Texas. We made we made the Army uniforms. You know, like the, they made the pants and the shirts for the Army. Another one makes the, the, the cable for the for the aircraft carriers. Like it's all, they they give the work. Like if you get a Unicorn job, you, you, make, you might make $150 a month, 200. That's big money. Like, you know, in jail. You know the money they're making? I was in jail when Desert, when they invaded Iraq. What was it, 2000, uh, 2002? They were working overtime. You know what they charged? They were making like, somebody makes the mail bags, the things for the parachutes. They made billions of dollars. It's a billion dollar industry. And they're paying guys $150 a month. They want to put people in jail for slave labor. That's slave labor. You never see nothing like it. But nobody sees that. You know, you don't know until you live it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you would never think. Like, you know, listen. My, my Like, people I know that I met, my friends, girlfriends, like, they're from the suburbs. They never would think the government. I'm not talking about regular cops. We need regular. I'm talking about the, the government, the, the FBI. They would never think they're crooked. Oh, no, the FBI, yeah. They're worse than anybody, believe me. My friend had a case. My friends, my, co my ex co did well, I wasn't on the case. There was three FBI agents on the case, the head agent and two other agents. They ran the whole case. They got caught. Now, this is fact. They got caught cheating on a test to get a raise. They cheated on some test with, to get a raise and pay. We found it. They gave it to us. They gave it to them. My lawyer was on the case. My lawyer wanted to cross-examine the agents when they were on stand about it. The judge said, the judge was no good. He said, oh, it's prejudicial. What do you mean prejudicial? If they lied to get a raise, you think they ain't going to lie to put, put me in jail? Are you, are you kidding me? And, and they won't let it in. And they admitted it. Okay, Tristan, you have a question? You want to go for that, please? I can't hear. Oh, sorry. Let me try to unmute it on here. It's I see. Oh, okay. Um, I put, um, what did you do in prison, like, to pass your time? Like, did you pick up any, like, I don't know, things about yourself? What did you learn about yourself? 
I worked out. I worked out a lot. Uh, that's where I learned how to read. I read books, magazine, papers, and jail. I learned how to read. I mean, you know, you make the best of it. You know, do I want to beat her? No, nobody wants to beat her. But you make the best of it. You cook, you get a lot of good guys, you hang around, you play cards. You know, it's 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 not as bad as they make it to be. But, you know, I, I worked out. I got in that shape. I got I to, gotta, I gotta, I'm going back to the gym this week. I haven't worked out in a year and a half. <laughs> so, Ramey, you have a, yours is a good follow up to this as Joey can speak firsthand. So, Ramey, what do you have as a question? Um, you said my name, right? Yeah, I see. Um, so my question was, do you think prison rehabilitated you? No, not really. I mean, no, I don't think it did. Um, is there anything that could be done in prison to um make you feel a different type of way? I mean, they don't do nothing for you, like they're, they're, especially now. I mean, it's I mean, years ago they had they had weights. Uh, you could you could get old like we used to get HBO. I remember I watched Mike Tyson fight in jail when I was in Raybro. Now they they took everything away. There's nothing there, nothing. They don't give you nothing. No money. The food's horrible. I mean, it's bad. It's bad. It's it's bad. People don't see it though. You know, they they think it's you know they call it club fed. Yeah, that's when you're in a camp. You know, yeah, it's nice, but when you're in the penitentiary and and a place, it, it, it it's horrible. The living conditions are bad. It's bad. I mean, there's. They walk around like they'll bring in like senators to the show, but they clean the whole place up when they come. As soon as they leave, it's back to it's like a zoo. Joey, if you can talk about it too, to give these guys a little slice of it, how is federal prison different than state prison, than a, a local jail? H how is the, the the different conditions and maybe even the motivation of the people running those facilities? I mean, the county jails are bad. They're, you know, you get old nuts coming in here and there I'm, but like everybody says club fed like yeah like alan would camp yeah that, that's nice it is i mean they got tennis courts I mean, it's beautiful but federal like the, the, the penitentiaries where i was at and the meeting the dumps you can't get nothing from the outside it depends like different states like i i was in jail in jersey in the state back when i was a kid it was it was beautiful we had you were allowed to get 50 pounds of food a, uh, 50 pounds a month of food a tv in your cell cable it was beautiful the feds you get nothing no tv no nothing so different states are different you know okay little snuff i'm going to direct this one to you and then uh noah leah you'll have the next question we're, we're talking about it in a critical sense of people either with drug issues, rehabilitation issues, and the system not working as we would probably have been told it's working. Do you guys try to bring anybody else onto the show? Are there any uh, positive cases or any successes that you guys have seen of the system? And have you brought them on? Will you bring them on yeah. to talk about different so, perspectives? We just were with our friend Adam in Vegas. He actually was, he got sentenced to 213 years in prison, 213 years. And he got out of prison, Joe. They overturned his case. No, he got out on a second, oh, uh, second chance. Second chance act. So he came yeah. on, he's got a beautiful wife, a beautiful son. Now, you know, his life is back to normal. And we just had him on the podcast. The episode actually was last week. You could actually hear some of his story and how he got out of prison. But if that never happened, he's facing 213 years and never coming home. Listen, we did a show on thank the two days before Thanksgiving in Philly. It wasn't even a podcast that we, we did. A, I did. A, uh, we gave about 500 turkeys, 100 bicycles to kids on the privilege, 100 coats, sneakers, toys. We did every, a dinner, gave the money. I had my friend on on. The, the Kim McKeel, he just got out 47 years straight, dead innocent. They let him out. So I had him there. It was his first Thanksgiving. He wanted to give back to the community. So he's there with us and, and we're talking. Like I, I told a story. He was in jail for 47 years. He's dead innocent. They let him out. You know, YouTube shadow banned the show. What did I do? Well, oh, I said the truth. The guy was innocent. He got out. I gave out turkeys. We fed kids. We gave him bikes. We gave him coats. We gave him money. They shadow banned us. They took it right off YouTube. That's why I'm not on YouTube no more. I hate YouTube. They don't like the truth. They want to control what you say. Yeah. I, I do think that is one of the themes that we've heard. The government, YouTube, Google. It is a bigger situation 
then we're led on to Google. Uh, and it's not just never, searching for terms. I never would have believed it until I, I seen it. I seen it with my own yeah. eyes. They did us. They hate they us. They push the it's narrative crazy. that they want to see. Yeah, they control it. I mean, it's it's nuts. It's really sick. What happened to the First Amendment? Freedom of speech. And you could see, too, I put Joey's Patreon link in there. There's obviously other ways of reaching an audience if YouTube becomes a problem. So we have a few yeah. more minutes. I've got a couple more questions. Aliyah, you want to ask your question? Me? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, hi, I'm Aliyah. <laughs> hi, Aliyah. Hi. Uh, so I said, in terms of legality, in what ways do you think the government or even through general society that there can be an implementation of criminal justice reform? How can we as citizens of our country help add to the change? And then I said, what do you think the government should start doing in order to enhance this reform? Well, we're trying to, I got my good friend, uh, Joe Maroney's attorney in Philly. He got like four or five people out so far. We're trying to, we got to raise, it, it costs a lot of money, you know, like you got to hire ton of lawyers, paralegals, uh, investigators. So we're trying to get a platform, a nonprofit to raise money to help people to get out. I mean, that's the only way we can do it. I don't, we don't have the, we don't have the resources. I mean, the government's yeah. got all the resources in the world. I mean, they print their own money. They got a machine. We, you know, we're trying to get people out there to help us to donate. And then we're going to try and get, you know, the innocent people out. And it's the best we could do right now. Okay, awesome. no, Aaliyah, I'm sorry, I jumped over you. Your question is next. And if anybody else has a question, uh, please put that in there. We've got a little less than 10 minutes to go. That's all right. Um, hi, my name is Noalia. <clears throat> my question is, how similar would you say the media portrayal is to the Hollywood portrayal of crime and justice? The media to the Hollywood? I'd say it's the same. Yeah, they're close. Hollywood, the media loves it. I mean, it, it sells papers. I was on the front cover, I don't know what year it was, 99? Me and Alan Iverson was on the front page more than anybody. I think eight times in, in one year. Front yeah. page for nothing. <laughs> Crazy. The media is dangerous. I mean, they really are. They control it. I mean, they, they say what they want. I seen it firsthand with YouTube. I've never seen nothing like that in my life. So, Joey, if you could expand on that, what is this? Because we hear about it, right? And I'm sure students have read articles or, or heard about it. I think for you is a really good example. You can talk firsthand. What is this connection with the legal system, the justice system, the, the federal government in terms of the FBI and law enforcement and big media now, if it's Google, if it's other large companies? Can you talk about this connection that these uh, institutions have intertwined and what it means to an individual like you. I mean, they control everything. I mean, they're, they're the most powerful people in, in the world. I mean, the country. I mean, look, I mean, I mean, I'm not talking Democrat, Republican. They knew about Hunter Biden's laptop a year before the election. One, they knew. I mean, they were blaming Russia, whatever. They knew the guy Barr knew. He said he didn't want to interfere with the election. Now it all came out. It, they said, no, it wasn't his. Or Russia did it. They knew it was his. They waited till it, and now it came out, you know, two years later. If that was me, I would have got hung. They would have locked me up, my mother, my kids, my wife, my dogs. They would have took us right out of the house. So they control it. They control it. No station talked about it. Not one station except uh, Fox talked about it. That was it. And the Post. So they control it. They have control. And little snuff for you to follow up. How is it important now that, as we said, anybody, all 30 people right now could form their own podcast and you don't have to have the power of a large media company or a good relationship with the federal government. How important is it for you now to have this platform to discuss these topics that you don't hear in the general news? Yeah, we're, we're really big on that. We want to talk, talk about what everybody doesn't want to say. So that's why it's always important just always to tell the truth and everything that Joey says or I say, we have proof to back it up. But if you were going to start a podcast, my suggestion would be go for it, start promoting it on social media and follow your heart and just do it. And don't and don't let them control you. Say what you want to say. You got to write. You can say whatever you say, what you want to say. say. 
you can't say this, you can't say that. That's why we're on our own platform now. I can say whatever I want. Sounds like my class. The students say whatever they want to say. That's right. Good. That's Don't it. give up. Yet. Okay. I love it. Janae, you, you had another question. You want to go for that? I think that's a good follow up here. You say me? I can oh. hear you now. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Um. Well, I had two questions. I don't know which one he was uh speaking about, but um, the first one was like, what is your perspective on the use of informants in organized crime investigations, and like how has this affected organizations and like the individuals involved? That's Listen, a good question. That's a good question. It's so corrupt. Look at. I'm going to take for instance. I mean, I had ten guys testify against me. I'm going to take friend. You probably heard Sammy the Bull. He admitted to killing 19 people. 19 people. He got five years. He did three years for 19. You get more for drunk driving. Just to give up. Just to, for him to tell on John Gotti. I mean, it's, 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 it's crazy. It's crazy. For one murder. John got charged with one murder. So they let a guy go with 19 murders to get a guy with one murder. I mean, it's... it's, it's and they give him whatever they want. I mean, it, it, freedom is the... They give them money, houses, take care of their families. You know how many people I got out of jail? All they did was tell them they got right out. They were facing, they were never getting out. Life with no parole, never, could never get out of jail. They told on me, they lied. We proved that they lied. We got found not guilty, thank God, because we didn't do it. And they went home. I got to get Ralph Natale. He was getting life with no parole. Four, he didn't get caught doing a crime with me. And ain't like me and him went and robbed the bank, and then he told on me. He got caught selling meth his fourth time. He got his son-in-law locked up. He was getting light. He was never getting out. They, he did a couple of years. They let him and his son-in-law out, and I had to face life or death. It's crazy. It's not, it's not fair. Yeah, thank you. I have one more question. Um, in your opinion, how does media coverage impact the fairness of criminal, tri criminal trials, especially in high-profile cases like yours? Well, the, uh, it's fun. That's a good question. There was... If you could go back and read, we were on trial about 2000, 2000. There was, there was two writers. One was Kitty Caparella from the Philly Daily News. She hated me. And one was George Anastasia from the Inquirer. If you would have read, the, like, now I'm in court. And we had the witness on the stand. And my lawyer, we caught him in live. We killed him. My lawyer killed him. Cross-examination. Next day, you read the paper, the Daily News. I, I was like... Was I in his courtroom? She would just write, like, to bury us. And then George would write the truth. And it was a good article. Like, you know, we caught him lying. They just, they, they, they write, they do what they want. They, it's, it's crazy. She hated us, Kitty Caparelli. I cursed her out one day, so she never wrote a good story about me. Okay, a couple more minutes. Uh, I'll ask both of you guys. And uh, Little Snuff, why don't you go first? I don't know if you guys have talked about this. What would be, you could right now press the magic button. Who would be the guest you want on the podcast? And then I'll ask Joey. I would say Dave Portnoy from Barstools. In what, like what, what could you, because there's somebody that obviously has a big platform. What would you want to do yeah. talk or direct him differently than we see otherwise? Well, uh He's he loves sports like me and Joey. He loves gambling. He's got the biggest platform, probably it will be ever when he's finished. Um, so we would like to have him on the show, talk sports, maybe go golf, things like that. He'd be a good guest. All right, Joey, you you could book it, whoever it is. Who do you want to sit down and just do your general, just talk off the cuff that obviously people find venture very entertaining. I would say Michael Rubin. He got Meek Mills out of jail. He's for prison reform. He helps everybody. I mean, the guy does so much, and he don't let nobody know about it. He's no, you know what I mean. And he's he's for prison reform. He got Meek Mills out of jail. If it wasn't for him, Meek Mills would never got out of jail. And he helps everybody. He's I don't know him. I hear he's a great guy. I know people that know him. But he's first class. He helps he helps everybody. But he does it on the download. Yeah. Nobody knows he's helping. Him. He's not doing it for people to talk good about him. So I would like, and he likes sports and he's all of a guy. Okay, one more minute here. So I've got one more question. I'm going to ask Little Snuff first. 
these guys, if they want to go in to create content, you said before you went before the podcast, you were doing some other video commercial work. What would you say if someone is going to do well in creating content, videos, whatever it might be, what separates good from not so good? Just being different. You have to be different. I started making car commercials screaming on the top of my lungs. And then one video went viral and that was all it took. You just have to be different. Keep creating content, 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 two videos a day. Okay, Joe, this will be our last question. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you, both of you guys. It was really great. Uh, I hope all no, of you appreciated we're, we're, it. Thank we you. Come, we want to come back. Definitely. We want you to come back and we've got your Patreon link in the chat. So, Joe, if any of these guys want to go into, let's say, criminal justice, the legal system, it, it sounds like you've seen the dark side of it, the bad side of it. What could someone with good intentions do to help the system? I mean, I don't think one person could do it by themselves. I mean, it's just, it needs a lot of work. I mean, it needs, I mean, they got to go to Washington, whatever. I mean, it, it, needs, it needs a lot of work. But you guys follow your dreams. You could be best lawyers, maybe senator, maybe hopefully one of you will be the president one day. You just don't give up. You, you can do whatever you want to do. Don't do don't do what I did. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just say you're in school. You got to beat now. That's it. You got what do you got? Another three, four years? Then law school is three years. And then you you set for life or whatever you just want to do, you just set. You can be whatever you want. Don't listen to nobody. And if you do a podcast, speak the truth. Don't 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 let nobody tell you, oh, you can't say this, you can't say that. Just be you, and and you'll be fine. That's a perfect Absolutely. way to end it. So, want to thank Joey Little Snuff for their time and their insight. Want to thank you guys as well. So I have all those links, and definitely follow them on social media. Listen to their podcasts. As I've said, I listen to you guys in the podcast, uh, in the car. It's something different. We have so much yeah. deformity in the media now. I think follow what they're doing and uh, just want to thank both of you gentlemen once again I, for your time. No, thank you for that. And listen, uh, guys and girls, uh, uh, if you need us, we'll give email, phone number, any questions, you just text us, whatever. Whatever is easier for you. And follow them. Yeah, you can follow. message us on Instagram. I'm, I'm sure you'll be in school in May, right? May 1st, you'll be in school, right? You're still in school. Yeah. Follow the, follow the Marty Tassetti case. It goes to this guy 33 years. It's in Jersey. It's up, it's up by you guys. So uh, he should be getting out. Hopefully, just follow the case. Tassetti, awesome. Marty Tassetti. We'll do Make that. We'll get Marty some articles school. and I'll share like them. Like a home, homework, yeah. A homework assignment. Great. Follow we'll it. He'll get out. Thank you, guys. God thank bless you. Thank you very much, guys. We'll see you. Have thank a good thank day. Thank you. Thank you. Got to thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to work this. Uh, press leave meeting. There's probably, Joey, something in the bottom left. Leave meeting. No, it says invite. I don't even, I don't know how to work. Oh, leave. I see it. Yeah. Bye, guys. All right. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you all.